up you guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel so today is day three and yesterday I went through so much to be able to upload and I couldn't even upload meaning that today I'm going to be making literally two videos for yesterday and for today so today is the story that I was supposed to tell yesterday but I'm telling now so let's get into the video this is day three but it's supposed to be day two Let's just say it's day two of the 31 days of Halloween. I hope you guys really enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell button to be notified every single time I post. And hit the like button if you like the video. Let's get on with it now. So today's story is going to be another um, story that happened to me. I have a certain limit that I want to tell. Um, but either way, here goes the entire recap of um, yesterday. I mean... And clearly on October 1st, I told the breathing problem story, but today, day two, um, I will be telling and sharing the story of something that happened to me while I was camping. So, okay. So one day, um, I was, I went to camp. My mom was like, oh, my mom was like, okay, I don't want you to go to camp. I have a bad sense, I have a bad vibe, I just don't want you to go to camp. And this wasn't one of those school camps for the summer camp. No, it was just a normal camp going with my cousins. So I'm there with my cousins and I'm like, Mom, please, I mean, nothing bad's going to happen. We're just going to camp for two days and we're going to come back. So I go, my mom's like, okay, I just don't want you to go. I have a bad feeling about it, vibe. And I'm like, Mom, nothing's going to happen. Really, my aunts and uncles are here and my cousins are here, you know? Nothing bad's going to happen at all. So then we get into the RV and we go right away and we just stop, get um, one of those gallons where you just fill it up and you just like put it somewhere of gasoline just in case and everything. And we got snacks and food and a bunch of junk food, um, which was like a dream come true for me. Even though I always get junk food, I, I like I love getting junk food, so <laughs> But I think when my mom's like, fine, whatever, you can go, but I have a very bad feeling about this. Whatever. So then I am going there in the RV, we stop, get the gallon of um gasoline, and then we keep on driving. And we head to the mountains or well really the camping site. Um and we're there and one of my cousins tells me that he has a Ouija board and he wants to play it out there. Now, a little disclaimer, there was nobody there. Like, nobody. Nobody was there, just us. Nobody was there for if anything happened, a rescue. No, nobody was there. So my cousin is, I like, I have a Ouija board. We should play it at like, in the dark with a bonfire, right? So he's like, oh my God, I have a Ouija board and we should play it in the bonfire at night when it gets dark. And I'm like, no, because I've always been told that a Ouija board can bring out bad spirits or bad things, bad connections, let's say. A Ouija board can help you connect with somebody from the other world, from another dimension, but really, a Ouija board has its ups and downs where it happens almost none of the time where you're able to connect with a person in your family that has passed. Okay, that's cool, that's good and all, but most, um, there, most of the time, a lot of bad spirits come through and they like connect with you and then they just haunt you forever. And it literally can change your life. So, I was like, no. I mean, no. I'm, no. I was just there like, no, no, no. I'm not going to be part of this. And I was like, actually, I didn't even want to see them play. I just like, like stood in the RV with my laptop watching Netflix. Because I think the site was like one of those sites where they have internet and they have like an R RV plugger for the 
for like stove if you want to do something on the stove and it has a plugger and you're able to like charge the iv the rv sorry so i was just there i think there was air like internet connection i don't know but i was there and i was in and i was just there i think i was watching netflix or a series or something but i was watching something i remember i don't know if i was watching youtube or netflix but i was definitely watching something so i'm there and they're outside playing the ouija board i was like okay outside like you seriously guys don't want, even want to play it in the ouija board you guys want to play it outside so they played it outside it was like 12 in the morning and it starts moving and they're just there and they're like oh my god it started moving oh my god and then it started moving it's telling things it started moving and i was like uh, no, yeah no i'm not going there i st i just like, literally stayed in the rv i was I was like so scared because of all the stories I've heard and because my parents warned me not to play with a Ouija board. A Ouija board is something very serious. It's a paranormal game that can destroy and ruin your life. So I was always told not to play with it. And I'm not like a super obedient child, but when it came to those circumstances, circumstances then yes. I was obedient when it came to those types of Ouija board and paranormal stuff, games and everything. So I was just there and I was literally looking out the window. I was like, hmm, like how you go here, like go, like literally, oh my God, like literally doing this and watching them play to see if anything bad will happen or something. So I'm just there and watching and my cousin the oldest cousin of them all was around that time 12 and he was there he had his fingers there and then he was just there you know and then he suddenly felt cold and i was like and well i was there but he like I was close like literally there was a little picnic table right here and the RV was like literally right here picnic table RV and the window was open so I was able to hear them and see them and I was just there like no on my computer and then my cousin was like oh my god do you guys like feel that it's cold and I'm there and I'm like mm, and I just go like that I'm like it's not cold like, I can literally feel, I ha I don't have anything, like, I literally, all I had was a t-shirt, a t-shirt or a tank top. And they're like, I don't feel the cold. And nobody else was feeling cold, just he was feeling cold, which was clearly impossible. Either way, that's when things started to get a bit creepy from now on. So, everything got creepy there. So, one started feeling cold. And then one started to feel dizzy. One of the other cousins, he was like the middle cousin. You know, there was the oldest one that started to feel cold. And there was the middle cousin. And he, the middle cousin was like around 10 or 11 years old. Like very close. And the youngest cousin was around 6, 7, 8 or 9. No, he was around, yeah, 9. No. Okay, yeah, I was during there i was nine years old and he was no he was seven or eight around that time so um one started feeling cold the oldest one and the other middle the, the oldest middle one was starting to feel dizzy and lightheaded so let me catch my breath so he started feeling dizzy and I'm here like, oh my god, and then he's just there like, oh my god, why am I feeling dizzy? And in that moment, one was feeling cold, one was feeling dizzy. Hmm, what a coincidence. Not. I tell them, you guys, end the game, say goodbye, leave. Stop it. Say goodbye and leave the game. And then the youngest one of all starts bleeding through his nose. Like, literally, he starts bleeding right and i'm there watching them and the youngest one was directly to the window of the rv the the like oldest one was like here right so it was the picnic table here was the youngest one 
here was the oldest one until the back was the middle one, right? So they were youngest, oldest, and middle. And I was like right here in the RV watching. It was like literally, imagine, okay, yeah. Imagine my bed being the RV. And imagine this being the table. It's very close to the RV, so I was able to see. So the youngest one is over here, and I'm looking at them because I'm like, you guys, I'm the game. And the youngest one is here, and he starts bleeding through his nose. And then there, I storm out because the youngest one was very connected to me, is very connected to me. We're, we're like inseparable, but either way, the youngest one starts bleeding. And I swarm out of the RV and I just start yelling at them like, end the game, end it, say goodbye. And then like a big swoop of wind comes, like a very big like wind gust goes like, and I almost feel like I'm about to get knocked out from all that wind. Nobody else felt the wing. Nobody else felt the wing, like the wind. Why did I say wing? Nobody felt the wind. I felt the wind. Nobody else did. So then the Ouija board starts spelling, tell her to leave. Like, you know, piece by piece. T E L L H E E R T O L E A V E. Right? Did I spell that right? I don't know. Either way, tell her to leave. That's what they said. And I was like, I am not leaving. You guys are ending this game right now. And it looks like the spirit that they were like exchanging words and connecting to um, didn't want me there or the spirit was getting mad that I wanted to lose connection with them and sent him back to the other world because I don't know if you guys have heard that sometimes these spirits that come through the Ouija board make a deal with you that if they do something for you, that you would bring them back from the dead or something like that, that you would do a ritual and make them come back to life or something like that. I heard that. I don't know if it's true. Um, but I, I, that always stuck with me. I don't know if it's real. I don't know if it's fake, but I, I, I don't know if this is an actual thing or it's just a hoax, but either way, I'm still trying not to really remember, <laughs> but anyway, um, the spirit was getting mad at me for trying to make them stop playing the game. And I go back into the RV. I close the door. So, like, there's the RV door. What was that? So, there's the RV door. Sorry. Okay, I hear crackling noises. I don't know if it's my shirt that has this little ribbon here thing type. I don't know if it's that or I don't know if it's the charger that's like clicking, that's like clicking or chippering. But either way, like I was telling you, so I close the door, close the door, and and they end the game improperly <laughs> so the ghost i mean the spirit was starting to get knock things down and starting to get a bit violent and there was a cup of tea right and he spilt the cup of tea on the oldest brother so i mean the oldest cousin he was right here and it just spilt the cup of tea it was right here and it just spilt the cup of tea the hot boiling cup of tea and he's like, and everybody, and he's like, everybody take off your hands. Takes them off. 
doesn't say goodbye. Doesn't move the thing to goodbye. Doesn't do anything to end the game. Doesn't say goodbye, doesn't do goodbye, doesn't do anything to shut it off. He just goes like that, puts it away, there, hides it, there. And I'm like, you did not just take off your hands while not saying goodbye. I was shook. I was like, okay, so you didn't say goodbye to a ghost that spilled boiling hot tea on you. And you didn't say goodbye to a ghost that was just spreading a bunch of gust of wind on me and making my little cousin nosebleed and making my middle cousin get like dizzy and making you get cold. You didn't even say goodbye. And he was like, oh my God, I totally forgot. I'm so sorry. What if that thing haunts us now? Um, boo -boo. If it's looking for peace, it wouldn't have come through that door. It wouldn't have come through that beauty board, but it's not looking for peace. So I was there and we kind of all forget about the Ouija board thing and we just start watching a movie and eating popcorn and you know, um, telling scary stories, I guess. And we don't exactly remember the Ouija board thing, but we go to sleep and we turn off all the phones because this guy says that the like the little manager or the store um the store clerk that was in the like store where you get the Wi-Fi password and when you can get treats and stuff like that he was like make sure that at night you guys turn off all the um all type of electronic device because there's a lot of native, oh, there's a lot of animals here that live. They get attracted to electromagnet waves that come from your device and can harm them or make them get violent. And simply another reason is because we only have a certain little amount of internet and we don't want it to go to waste through you sleeping. I'm like, okay, yeah. So we turn off all our phones. Oldest, oldest one off his phone off oldest middle one off me my phone off the youngest one didn't have a phone but he had a tablet off my computer off everything was off and we get up all of them we get up all of us at 3 a.m exact on the dot to find our phones on when we could clearly remember that we turned them off. And what a coincidence at 3 a.m. Such a coincidence, wow. Crazy, but yeah. <laughs> phones turn on and basically phones turn on and we check all our things and there are one voicemail on each phone and the um, and the little cousin the youngest of all of them he had his tablet and in his tablet he can't call anybody but there still was a voicemail he doesn't have the call um thing on his iPad he didn't have that he only had games and school stuff like IXL or like little games that he had that he played and he had a voicemail he doesn't have a number it was a tablet and he had a voicemail too so obviously the oldest one goes and checks the voicemail and the voicemail says 
um, I forgot the word. Hold up. Well, let me call him exactly right now just to know exactly, um, what, 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 like, he actually had said, what the, like, spirit had actually said, um, about it. Let me call him one moment. Okay, so I just called him, and he told me that the spirit had said, in a very sinister voice, well, a spirit or something, had said, thank you for not shutting me off. Thank you for not shutting me off. Like, basically, thank you for not saying goodbye and sending me back to the other side. And we all checked the voicemails. The youngest one, we took his tablet. And the, the oldest one um, listened to the voicemail. Because we obviously didn't want him to listen to those types of things. But either way, all of the phones and tablets, and all the phone and the tablet, all the phones and the tablet got passed down to the oldest one. So he was the one that was listening to all of the, well, the voicemails that were on the phone and on the tablet. And it was all the same, the exact same thing was said on all of them. So, So I don't exactly know where I finished off because I let the camera um, pause and I kept going on with the story and it was paused. So, okay, <sighs> trying to make this. I think I stopped in the mm, the parent no of oh, the voicemail thing. Mm -hmm. So we get a we get um after the Ouija board experience, we get our phones at three a.m. and we get a voicemail of a sinister voice saying, "Thank you for not cutting me off," or sh no, "Thank you for not shutting me off," meaning thank you for not saying goodbye and sending me back to the other world or the other side from the ghost or the spirit. I'm sorry for not explaining. I don't exactly know where I left off. But yeah, so we're just there and we show our uncle and our aunts and they were like, oh my God, stop playing around. So literally we go show our aunts and uncles and we're like, oh my God, this and that and that and the Ouija board and we all tell them that. And my family, they all believe in these sort of paranormal things. So they all believed it, of course. So then they grabbed our phones and they started looking through the voicemails and they were like playing each voicemail. Oh, look, nothing. Oh, look, nothing. Oh, look, nothing. So really, at the random, they're like, there's nothing here that says, thank you for not shutting me off. So literally, they're like, stop lying, stop faking it, go back, sleep, and turn the phone off because clearly, the store clerk started to turn it off. Go back to sleep. We checked our phone. Effectively, the voicemail had magically disappeared, even though we saved it. So comes morning, and the youngest one, that means the youngest child was, I mean, the youngest like cousin was bleeding all night, but we didn't know that he was bleeding. So... He was bleeding all of this. Like, all of this was, like, coming from here. And he slept that way. So it was all coming like that. All even through his ears and all around his brace. Poor thing. We washed him off. And he kept bleeding throughout the night, throughout the day, and everything. So, and then the one that was the middle one that was experiencing... The headaches and the lightheaded and being dizzy. He took a Tylenol. That didn't help. Um, but either way, by morning, he stopped feeling like that. So, yeah. 
After all, everything was okay. The young, the oldest child has had very, very bad luck and he's always had bad experiences. The youngest child since that had, has never ever stopped bleeding in normal times. He, I mean, he stops bleeding, but then he just bleeds every single time. Um, so he bleeds like every 30 minutes. So yeah, either way, thank you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this. The middle child has always been experiencing bad headaches and like severe things. Now his mom um, didn't go with us on the trip. Basically what happened, it was the aunts and uncles of every single child went. So really a lot of like his mom didn't wasn't going on the trip, but his dad did. So uh, his dad thought it was a very bad headache and thought it was like, I don't know, a very bad headache. And the youngest child has never stopped bleeding ever since. He always bleeds once in a while. And the middle child has always had a headache since that day. And the youngest one, the one that made the connection, the one that wanted this to happen, um, actually, um, he, you know, kind of has always had a bad luck and yeah, and his house is always visited from that ghost, like the ghost attached to him. But either way, you guys, I hope you really enjoyed this very creepy, um, experience that I had, um, well, uh, basically having a normal camp out. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you liked it. Please subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys really like this video. I believe in the unbelievable. And by the way, you guys, be very careful and safe on the way you play with Ouija boards. Those things can attract unbelievable things but anyway you guys thank you so much i hope you have a great morning afternoon night whatever it is for you love you bye